All right, we're gonna dive right in. So I'm gonna start this a little different. I'm gonna do a little Q&A, and the main subject of this video is gonna be buried within the video. Uh, but for some reason, I, I like doing the Q&As because I think there's just so much information to get out, and I like getting it out, and the cues are where the videos come from. So we're just gonna go through in my opinion, we're going to start off with my favorite one because I've been seeing a lot of these. So I'm just going to read these off to you. This is three different comments that I've gotten. Um, there, there's more. I just copied and pasted three here in my little Word document so I could read through them. See what you think about this. <clears throat> Comment number one. A handyman is not a real plumber, electrician, carpenter, cabinet maker, painter, so don't expect to make as much money. So he's saying a handyman is not a real, and then he lists a whole bunch of different trades. Uh, there isn't a handyman, this is comment number two from a different person. There isn't a handyman on this planet worth a hundred bucks an hour. No disrespect, but I'm a general contractor. I have tons of experience in all facets of construction, about 28 years total. Probably half of what I do is fixing jobs that a handyman had did. At least in my neck of the woods, most handymen are okay for changing outlets and switches, maybe changing a trap, painting, and simple stuff. But I have yet to meet a handyman who is highly skilled well when that... Bad grammar. I have yet to meet a handyman who is highly skilled, comma, well when that does high quality work. Those are the guys that keep me busy. I am generally booked out four to six months ahead of time. I work roughly 30 hours a week and make roughly $100,000 a year. Simply because I know what I'm doing, I'm good at it, and I don't rip people off. I don't advertise everything I get is by word of mouth. Sounds like you're doing good. Uh, but you definitely seem to think that somehow handymen are lesser than you. Uh, no disrespect, this is comment number three. No disrespect, but those prices in my neck of the woods, you'd be at <clears throat> out, assuming it means out of business in a couple weeks. Licensed contractors don't even charge those prices. If Arizona can't afford that, God bless you. So what's the pattern here? The pattern is that licensed contractors don't seem to like that handymen can make money because like so many facets of life, uh, it's called an appeal to authority and it's a logical fallacy and essentially what they're saying is that their authority grants them some ability to know more or to be better that you have to default to them and that anything that isn't at their level which means having the contractor's license is somehow less and they set the ship they don't that's a beautiful thing about business it's a beautiful thing about america is you can do anything you want here. If you're smart and you're motivated and you want to go out there, if you can figure out what people want and what they're willing to pay for it, if you can give it to them and you successfully give it to them, they will pay you. And it's nobody else's business what you make. It doesn't matter if your aunt thinks that a handyman shouldn't charge $100 an hour. It doesn't matter if a general contractor thinks that. It doesn't matter if a property manager, which is who we try to work for, thinks that. I have one that I do some work for sometimes. She has a very cheap guy. Seems like he's probably charging like 25 an hour, maybe at the absolute most, because I've seen a lot of his pricing and I can guess how long it might take him to do the work and I can come to a conclusion. Uh, he's charging a quarter of what I am easily. So what's a handyman, right? That's just a label that we work under. And I'll tell you a secret, my property management companies, when they say handyman, when they say our handyman did this or we have another handyman that's going to do that, most of those guys have contractor's license. Most of them actually are very similar to me. I don't have mine yet, but I will soon. And when I do, the deal is kind of you start the business and the owner, preferably, excuse me, the owner or somebody within the business will have the contractor's license. So, in fact, here in Arizona, um, I'm pretty sure when I get mine here pretty soon, I think they said that the, yeah, 
So the person doesn't get the contractor's license here. What they do here is the business gets the contractor's license and you have to show when you're applying for the license that you have a qualifying party within your business, somebody who qualifies to be a contractor. And if you lose that person, the license goes away unless you can replace that person with another person who's also qualified. But so these guys, obviously, they don't like that I'm saying charge $100 an hour. Doesn't matter who likes it, right? What matters is if your property manager values what you do in such a way that you can get away with that rate, then that's your rate. You know what I mean? And I know guys are out there charging much more as handymen. Um, some for property management companies, it's a little easier with rich folks. They will pay luxury prices for handyman uh, services. But yeah, so your price, and here's another thing, I'll put it this way. In fact, this is becoming my bulletproof handyman motto, is we fix problems. Why do I say that? Because what we fix is not toilets or leaky sinks or leaky roofs or anything else. We're not fixing things. Uh, we fix problems. And I think I've told the story before, but for those of y'all who haven't seen all of my videos, um, here's how I'll put this. You have a homeowner, right? Somebody owns a home and they decide I want to rent this home out. So I'm going to rent it out. I don't want to do the work myself because I have other things to do. So I'm going to have a property management company manage my home and rent my home out for me. Hypothetically, you have money because you own the home and you're not living in it. You're going to rent it out. So you must be able to either buy or rent another home. So you're doing okay. You have money and you don't have time. So you find a property management company. Property managers are in the same boat, um, except it's not their money that they're spending when they're getting these properties fixed. But it's the same boat in terms of they don't have a lot of time either. Time is one of their most valuable resources. They're constantly having people move out, move in, have maintenance problems, have all kinds of issues, lock themselves out of the house, and it's just constant for them, and they don't want to have to deal with that. So what do they do? They find a handyman. And the idea is they want to pay you to take care of their problems. They're not paying you to fix a toilet. They're not saying, hey, I don't know how to fix a toilet, so I need to pay you to fix it. What they're saying is <coughs> this investment over here that I'm managing has a problem. And when it has problems, it could end up making less money or even costing the homeowner more money because if there's problems that don't get fixed, tenants go somewhere else. And then you have to turn the whole property around while you're still paying a mortgage on it too. So you can lose the money you paid in the mortgage and the rent money that you would have been getting that would have gone towards the mortgage. So you're a problem fixer. You're, you're not a toilet fixer. You're a problem fixer. And you charge whatever the goddamn going rate is for that. I'm sorry for the language, but people are always, always, always talking about how a handyman this and a handyman that. Well, guess what? Pick a different name. I don't care. Call it service provider. In fact, one of my companies, multiple companies actually that I've worked for, call them vendors. They don't even call them handymen. They just call them vendors. It's, it's we who call ourselves handyman. I saw something recently that I liked that was uh, somebody had like in the little closing line of their email said, Jack of all trades, master of some. And I think that's accurate because a lot of what people say is jack of all trades, master of none. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of guys, if you grow up working, like, say, in a factory or, like, working on city water lines or whatever, <clears throat> I guess you'd be a master at that. But the idea is if, if you have this separate career, like software engineer, you can still learn all the skills that a handyman has. So you, you become a jack of all trades. In other words, you know a little bit about all the trades, but you haven't mastered any of them. A professional handyman most likely is a jack of all trades and master of some. I would say when it comes to carpentry, I could call myself maybe not a master, but I have mastered building kitchen cabinets. I could build, I've been doing it since I was like teeny tiny. I can build all the cabinets in your entire house. Uh, so I've mastered that skill. PVC plumbing, I would say I've mastered that skill. Copper plumbing, I would say I've mastered that skill. I can tell you for sure I do it way better than nearly every single 
plumber that I follow behind. There's often times where I have to call the property manager and send him pictures and say, hey, <laughs> I can't close this wall up like this. Like, there will be just this whole gang of pipes and tubes and stuff and there's like 13 shark bites in there and everything's all cocked at an angle and under stress. So it is what it is. You're a handyman. Licenses don't mean anything. They really don't. Licenses mean something legally, but licenses don't mean that you actually know anything at all. I've just met so many licensed professionals and worked behind them and their work is shit and I'm not licensed and my work is better and I'm about to be a contractor probably by the end of the year I should have it all wrapped up and when I am a licensed contractor my work isn't gonna suddenly get any better I'm still gonna suck at doing like slate roofs and tile roofs I'm no good at them man I've just I tried I'm probably never gonna be great at them I'm never gonna master that skill just getting my contractor's license isn't gonna make me better at it and having an electrician's license if you ever changed an outlet it's an outlet dude you just, you change it. There's only one way to do it. I guess maybe there's five ways to do it, but I mean, really, you take the wires out of the old one and you get them in the new one. And there's screws that you screw down to hold them in place. There's just not a whole lot to it. And if you wanna be a master, go on YouTube because there are master electricians, master plumbers, master drywall finishers. There's masters of every single trade that are happy. I mean, happy to show you all of their skills, every little trick under the, under the sun, every trick in their book, they're happy to show you. So I just wanted to start off on this because I think y'all are going to hear this a lot. You might have property managers that kind of figure out what you're getting per hour who get upset about it. It doesn't matter. You're an American man running a business providing a service and if you can find the people who are happy to pay a hundred bucks an hour for the service you provide, which is solving problems, if they're willing to pay it, they're willing to pay it. That means that's what your value is. So ignore all of them. Call yourself something else if you want. It doesn't really matter. But this, this to me is all BS. This whole, dude, not a real plumber, electrician, carpenter, cabinet maker, painter, so don't expect to make as much money. You make as much money as you decide you're going to make. And it's based on how hard you work and how smart you work. So let's move on I want to make sure I get to the main subject first so <clears throat> all right so main question for for this episode is actually how do I get on with property management companies a lot of y'all have been watching my videos I probably got in the last month 20 plus guys who have commented or emailed and said hey I've started my business Here's the issues I'm facing right now. And one of the main questions is how do I get on with property management companies? So let's dive into that subject. And by the way, um, I don't know if y'all watch me much on this video. I work all day, so I typically have YouTube playing on my phone and I just have my headphones in and I'm not watching. So I'm not trying to be entertaining. Um, I'm sorry if it's boring to just watch me in the chair, but I assume most of y'all, if you're trying to start a business, you don't have time to like sit down and look at me on the phone. But anyways, how to get on with a property management company. So here's what I got to say about that. Uh, number one, let's think of it as how do I get on with a property manager? Because most of my companies have multiple property managers and each manager kind of has like their handyman and this manager has her handyman and this manager has his handyman and they do kind of pass them around a little bit in terms of this guy may not have three skills and this may not guy may not have five other skills but they cross skill each other so they'll send jobs back and forth but think of it as how do I get on with a property manager rather than a property management company now within that question the short answer and I'm gonna dive in deeper for you but the short answer is get your info to them if they know that if you can just make sure that when the moment comes that they say I need a handyman and I don't have one who am I gonna send this job to they gotta send it to somebody they absolutely have to and if their handyman just fell off the map and isn't answering his phone or got in a fight with them and doesn't want to work with them or is on vacation it doesn't matter things come up and they need a guy uh, in fact emergency jobs are a big one because 
say a company has three property managers, each property manager has their own handyman. So collectively they've got three handymen plus one or two guys who sometimes do some things for them. And then a window breaks on a stormy night. They need somebody to go over right away. They, they have to have somebody go over right away. Their three guys, if they're doing well, are probably at home enjoying their evening and they just don't want to go, so they don't answer the phone. And by the way, that's a rule. If I ever write like 20 rules for handymen, one of the rules is answer your phone. Always. Do not ignore their calls. Even if you answer it to say, I'm sorry, I can't, it's better than not answering. If they know that you're a person with a phone, and all people who have phones tend to have it on them, and if somebody doesn't answer your call, it's because they didn't want to. So answer your phone. But anyways, get your info to them. Emergencies are a good time because they'll call their three guys and their three guys will either say no or probably not even pick up the phone. When they call you, you say yes, you go and you get the job done, you give them a decent price on it, and yes, your rates are going to go up later because nobody's going to start out at their highest rate. Uh, get the job done. So diving in a little bit deeper, uh, basically what I've set up to this point is get your info to them. You need to have a slew of property managers across your town that aren't using your services. Never have and maybe won't for months and months and months. But if they have your info, send them an email with a professional title that says Handyman Services, you know what I mean? Within the email or regular mail or a phone call, it doesn't matter. But basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that as many property managers as possible have your information because they will need somebody someday and when they do need that somebody they're gonna go ah, oh yeah there was that guy that I didn't use okay let's call him and guess what I'm that guy and then they send me out to do the job and then they send me another job and another job and another job and they're impressed at how quick I get them done because their main guy has gotten lazy so that's how you get on with them uh, that's that's like the quick and easy answer now, to go a little more in depth, I'm going to give you some advice on, because I'm assuming right now you're not looking to grow into more property management companies. You're probably asking, hey, I'm working for homeowners right now, or maybe a realtor here and there. How do I, I, I want to stop doing that. I want to do what you're doing because you're telling me that the money is better and there's more work and it's more stable and it's bulletproof, the whole point of this channel. So. Here's what I'm about to do. I actually need more property management companies. I've got four guys now that are doing work for me. Probably gonna add a fifth and a sixth really soon. In fact, I've already told them I would. I just, I don't have enough work. That's the point. So here's what I'm gonna be doing, right? I'm gonna print up and get in an electronic file as well. My LLC paperwork, my city business license, my state transaction privilege tax license, which is my state business license, my insurance, uh, all of the documents that somebody might want to see to show them that I'm a professional company, that I'm a legit company and not just some guy with a truck with some tools. I'm going to get all of this together and I'm going to put it in a package. And what I'm probably going to do, because I'm not desperate, I'm not in a hurry, is I'm gonna to put together a nice electronic package and I'm gonna go back to what I did at the very beginning when I started getting into property management. So I'm gonna go back to Google. I'm gonna probably make a new spreadsheet and go all over again and put all the property management companies on my spreadsheet with their phone numbers, any email addresses I can track down for them. And I'm just gonna start emailing my packages to these people. I'm even gonna send them a W-9 just so they know that I'm serious. They will have the entire package right there. Now, if that doesn't work, which I don't see why it wouldn't, but if for some reason for the first time ever I don't acquire a new property management company or a new property manager by doing this, then I'll probably stick a few in the mail. And if that doesn't work, I'll show up in person. Now, if you want work now, if you want work tomorrow, here's what you do. Do all the things I just said, print up all these documents, have it ready, understand your pricing structure and be able to articulate to the property manager very confidently what your pricing structure is. Be prepared for them to sort of be in shock a little and go, oh, that much? And you just calmly with your shoulders back and sitting up and you just say, yes, I understand that is a, that's not a great price. I know that there are guys who do it cheaper. 
However, this is how my business operates and I want you to feel free not to send me those smaller jobs if you're not okay with the rate that I'll be charging for the smaller jobs. But if you want to send me the bigger ones, then I think my rate will work out just fine with that. Uh, but you have to be confident that <clears throat> you need them to view you like a business. But here's what you do. Print it all up. Get your packages together. I would probably call ahead of time. I don't think you have to really. I mean, they're just people also. This is not some big like Wall Street office that you're walking into. It's typically, uh, I think the girls and the guys, if they're getting paid hourly, they're getting paid in the 20s per hour, which is pretty good rate. Some of them less. A lot of them are making percentages, but these are not like highfalutin people. Clean your truck, print up your documents, show up with a long sleeve, you know, button up, looking decent. Go in there, look people in the eye, shake their hand, introduce yourself, have enough packages to give a package to every property manager. I would also say, in fact, that what might be useful is if you... My babies, I don't know what's going on. But I can hear my wife out there with my babies. She just got them up from their nap. And I am hearing all kinds of just ruckus. They kind of woke up cranky this morning. And they have just been angry at everything. I'll be out there with her when I'm done with this video. I've helped her out today. But it's funny because I can tell that they're just a handful. So show up with all your stuff. Uh, multiple packages. One for every property manager. I honestly, like this sounds like a gimmick. But honestly, if I needed to... I would get some uh, some like refrigerator magnets because again, they have refrigerators at the office and what's your goal? Your goal is simply for them to have your information because one day they're gonna need a guy and they're just not gonna have another guy. They may have great guys that they're happy with for now, but there's gonna come a day when they need a guy. And worst case scenario, they just look at the fridge and go, ah, okay, well, let me give this guy a call. So go in there well-dressed, clean truck, etc., etc. Be confident, understand what your business is and how it works, um, <clears throat> and sell yourself. And I think you'll get somebody, I really do. It's just a matter of how many, do you have to go to three before you get one, or do you have to go to 17 before you get one? And if you're not willing to go to 17, you don't need to be a handyman, because let me tell you, if you're not willing and ready to just give this everything that you have, to just work your butt off, non-stop you know I'm in Arizona and it's been tomorrow's gonna be hundred and three I can tell you that um, and it's just it's been hot and I have no AC and I'm out there every day pounding it anyways I'm doing all the jobs when my when they send me jobs that I don't want to do guess what I do I do them anyways because that's what I need to do because when they want a handyman to them let me tell you what property managers think when they think of like what is a handyman to a property manager, a handyman is a way to not have to send a plumber with a $200 trip fee to do the plumbing problem and an electrician with a $200 trip fee to do the electrical problem and a roofer with a $180 trip fee to inspect the roof and figure out why it's leaking and a window guy to replace the lock on the window and a different guy for this and a different guy for that. That gets so expensive. To them, what a handyman is, is somebody with enough all-around knowledge and skill that when they have a move-out or a property with just 5, 6, 10, 15, 30 things wrong with it, they don't want to have to send work to like six different guys and pay all those different trip fees and deal with all of them and answer all their phone calls and remember all their names. It's exhausting for them. A handyman to them is a guy which is what I am to mine. I have one guy, he sends me all his work, all of it, just every single bit. He lets me know that all the time. He says, I just, whenever I get a job, I just forward it straight to you because I knock them all out. It is so rare that I have to call and say, hey, I can't do this job. Like it's just outside of my skill level. Or if it's not outside my skill level, it's outside the skill level that I could do profitably. And I tell him that too. I'm honest with him. He understands I'm running a business and that I need to be profitable. So I'm not going to take on, like if somebody wants a swimming pool built, could I build a swimming pool? Probably. Probably take me a year and a half and I'd probably make a lot of mistakes and I'd make no profit if I was doing it for somebody else. So I'm not going to do it. And they understand that. Um, so that's how you do it. You get all your information together. 
all of your information together, every single bit of it, print it up professionally, organized, and whether you email it to them or walk into the office or call them or whatever you do, that's how you do it. You just find a way to get in touch with them and get them your information. So let's go to some regular questions now. I actually enjoy this part more because I kind of like just ranting about handyman stuff. Sorry guys, I got allergies and I just, everything's just draining. All right, <clears throat> hello, I just got started as a full-time handyman. I'm not sure how to juggle working for a property management company and doing side jobs. I have a kitchen renovation job for a private client that'll take me two weeks, but what should I tell the property management company if they call me to do a job? I'm gonna be real direct with this one. S Stop it. You don't need to do kitchen renovations. You need to figure out what your business is. Now, if you love kitchen renovations and you can do them prop profitably, go do kitchen renovations. Organize your business around kitchen renovations. But if you're trying to work for property managers, then be a handyman who works for property managers because they don't, that's what I mean. When I was just talking about jobs I'll get, here's who I get the job from is from the guy who got a kitchen renovation, a little bit of extra money came along and he thought, oh, I could make $7,000 this week instead of $6,000 this week. I'm gonna go do this kitchen. Well, guess what? When she can't reach you and she needs somebody to go fix something immediately, like on the spot right now or just within the next 24 hours and you're not answering your phone and you're telling them you're busy or you're out of town or whatever excuse you make up because you've got a kitchen renovation, guess what? She's going to call me and I'm going to do a really good job. I'm your competition. I'm going to impress her and I'm going to make sure that even though she keeps using you, she starts every now and then whenever you're not answering that phone or whenever you get far behind or whenever she gets a call or two from a tenant saying, hey, I put this in like a week ago and I still haven't heard anything from the handyman. She's going to start sending stuff to me. So be the best at what you do. And if what you do is kitchen renovations, go do that and kick ass at it. And if what you do is serving property management companies, be the best at that. And you don't be the best at that by taking on side work. That's my opinion on it, because I will take your job. Uh, do you think $135 billable hour rate is a reasonable price for a big city? That factors in blah, 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 blah. So the question is, do I think $135 billable rate an hour is a reasonable price for a big city? I think that's a reasonable goal. I don't know that you should start there, but I also don't know your experience level. So, I mean, if you've got a contractor's license and you really can do just about everything and you just, you fit their needs all around, uh, you don't tell them you're $135 an hour. I don't give anybody hourly rates, but yeah, you can, I mean, half the jobs I do, I'm probably charging over 125 an hour and half the jobs I do, I'm charging maybe a little under a hundred an hour because I'm, I'm, I'm juggling how I want my property managers to feel. So I'm looking at the invoice that I can send them and saying, if I was them and I wasn't at the job and I didn't see how difficult or easy it was, what would I think about this invoice? Because in the end, what you need is for them to feel comfortable sending you all of the work and you need to average when, you're, when it's all said and done a certain amount of money per hour, which I think 100 to 125 is pretty good per hour. So yeah, I mean, it's a good goal. Um, I just wouldn't advertise that that's actually how I'm charging is that buy that $135 an hour, but I have days where that are way better than that. And I have days that are worse than that. And yeah, big city, like if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, I'm not even talking about LA or New York. I mean, I'm sure it's crazy there, but say you're in Dallas, Fort Worth or like Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas. Um, I think you could easily get away with billing like that. My question to you is, you mentioned you work nine to three, but a lot of the tenants I try scheduling with work day jobs. How do you get around that? Last thing I wanna do is take time away from my family to install the toilet at six or 7 p.m. So <clears throat> let's say you need, uh, you need the gas company to turn on your gas. And if you're here, somebody has to come by and actually check all the pilots in your house for them to turn on the gas they will not turn it on unless they can verify that you don't have unlit pilots just leaking gas into the air uh, and they have business hours and you need to find a way to be home for them uh, somebody's coming to install your cable well guess what you need to be home during their business hours 
you are not, I don't know, let's say the guy's name is Steve. It's not Steve changing a toilet. It's, uh, it's you know, Well Works Handyman Services that's changing the toilet. And Well Works Handyman Services, they have business hours. And if, if your tenants aren't available during your business hours, so if you say, hey, I have an opening on Wednesday at 3 p.m., uh, I'd like to come change your toilet on that day. <clears throat> if they say, I'm sorry, I'm only available on Saturdays and Sundays, then you say, uh, unfortunately, I don't work Saturday and Sundays. Now, I do. I work seven days a week. But my point is, you tell them when you're available as a business, as all businesses do, just like you can't go to Walmart and say, hey, sorry, but I work during your business hours and I can only come in at 2 a.m., so I'm going to need you to open up for me. They're going to tell you no. So it's the same way with this. Now, like I said, I do work weekends. So for me, it's handy that some people only have weekends. They tend to be pretty appreciative and accommodating when you're there on a weekend. But yeah, if your issue is that you want to know how do I get around this idea. In fact, my son's been doing this. I've been helping him with wording his messages to the tenants. So here's what, what I found he was doing was he was messaging tenants and he was saying, hey, this is so and so with such and such company and I have a work order to come fix your leaky sink. Uh, and what he was saying was, what times work best for you? Or what times are you, of what days and times are you available for me to come fix your leaky, leaky sink? And of course, what are they gonna say? They're gonna say, well, I'm available like after 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, or I'm available on the weekends after 11 a.m. because they wanna sleep in. <laughs> So that's what was happening was all of his jobs were getting scheduled on weekends and then the weekend would come about somebody would have plans and he was getting a lot of cancellations. So I showed him what I do because I do a lot of my uh, actual, it's probably 50-50. If I'm in the right mood, I make phone calls. Sometimes I like talking to people. It is a little faster to make the call and I can ask my questions and get them all answered. But sometimes, especially when I've just got a stack of things to schedule, I get my calendar out and I start going down my list. I group jobs by what area of town they're in and I go to that area and I just go, okay, okay, this one I know that it should take me less than an hour, so let me text this job to try to put them in this spot on my calendar and I do a little tentative note there on the calendar to say that I've offered the job to them or offered that slot to them. And then I go to the next one, the next one, the next one, I try to fill out all my days and I'm doing it all by text. And as the texts come back, Somebody will go, nope, sorry, I'm only available on whatever day. So, okay, next. Yes, that works. Okay, come down here, check mark, verified, this one's booked. But what I do is, what I say is, hi, this is Ray with blank company. Um, I have a work order to come fix your leaky faucet. My current next opening is this Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Or actually, now what I say is my next opening is this Wednesday, Wednesday for arrival between 11.30 and 12.30 a.m. So whatever time I want to be there, my goal for being there, I say that time, but I say for arrival at that time to an hour later. <clears throat> that way I have a small window where if a job runs over, I'm not late to the next one. I don't need to call them and tell them that I'm not going to be there at 11.30 as long as I can be there by 12.30. And then hopefully that one goes smooth and I finish it up when I thought I would and I'm at the next one on time. So that's what you do is you, rather than asking them what works for them, what you need to do is you need to pick the place that you want them to occupy on your calendar and you need to get in touch with them and you need to say, this is my next availability. If that doesn't work, then look at your calendar again and say, okay, well, how about next Tuesday at 3 p.m.? And if they say no, then say, okay, well, I'll tell you what, let me know what days and times you have available. And they may say only Saturday, and I would just put them in that Saturday slot. But if you're trying to get around that, the, the basic answer is we don't work Saturday and Sunday, you know, and we don't work after 5 p.m. We have regular business hours like all businesses and you'll need to find a way to be home for me for an hour for me to do this job. Uh, <clears throat> next, you forgot to mention how material cost is covered by the customer. For example, the job requirements are for a door replacement. You show up for the first hour to measure and get information. I'm not going to read through all of this. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Okay, do you charge for the time to physically get the door on top of the cost to purchase it? So you forgot to mention how material cost is co- Okay, this really applies so much more to people working for homeowners, and as you all know by now, this channel is not for handymen who are working for homeowners. This is handymen working for property management companies. So, very simple answer, I cover all the cost. I buy all the materials, every single material. I spend anywhere from three to five hundred a day on just like a nice busy day, like six hours actually on the job, working, driving place to place. I'm gonna go through three to five hundred dollars a day worth of materials. And <clears throat> that's because I'm buying them all. Now, for example, I do have one company that they have a Home Depot account. So let's say I go to do a move out and it's like $650 worth of materials. I can use their Home Depot account. I really don't do that anymore because I don't feel like it looks very professional. It's, it's more of a, if you're using their Home Depot account, you've kind of showed up and said, hey, I'm a handyman, you know, guy with a truck and some tools. I can do a lot of things. Will you please give me work? What I do is they send me work and then they receive an invoice and they send me work and they receive an invoice and I don't need to ask hardly any questions. I don't need to use their money to purchase materials. Uh, however, the sort of the second part of this is do you charge for the time to physically get the door on top of the cost to purchase it? Yes, all of my hours are accounted for. In fact, this will bleed right in to one of the other questions <clears throat> that I'm going to do. So this one is more about material costs being covered by the customer. They don't cover it. I get reimbursed for all that when the property management company pays out a big batch of my invoices in a week and a half. Uh, but charging for the time to get the door. Now, I don't remember exactly how somebody worded it. Hold on. Give me just a second if you can. <clears throat> uh, so you charge for estimates. Why is shopping free? Question mark. My time dot dot dot. So somebody's like, hey, you charge for estimates. So why are you shopping for free? He kind of misunderstood. I had to go rewatch the video, actually, because I was wondering why he thought that I that I go shopping for free. So I'm going to give you my philosophy on, again, I'm a professional business. This is how I want to appear to my clients is as a professional business. Uh, if you have a landscaping company come to your house to put in irrigation lines, you don't expect them to show up and then be like, okay, uh, well, I guess I better go to Home Depot and pick up some irrigation lines and some 90s and some emitters and stuff. You expect an irrigation company to show up with some basic stuff to do their job. Handyman should be no different. My van is full of inventory and tools that covers 90% of what I'm going to encounter every day. So what I don't charge for is if at the beginning of my day, before I go do even one job, if I need to make a trip to Home Depot, and this typically shouldn't be for one specific job. If it is, then yes, I charge for that time. But I kind of consider when I leave the house driving into town, I pass my Home Depot on the way in and I always need to make a stop. I just need to pick up a handful of consumables. And while I'm in there, I go, okay, well, I've got that sink today and or I've got that faucet today and I've got one faucet in the van. As long as I'm here, I may as well get another faucet so I don't lose my inventory faucet. But yeah, if I show up to a job, let's say uh, the, the faucets and all the fixtures are like super expensive brass. Well, we need to replace it with like kind. I'm not carrying super expensive brass faucets. So yes, if I need to leave that job, go to Home Depot, buy a brass faucet and bring it back and put it on, then yes, the time that I spend going to Home Depot will get billed with that 100 to $125 an hour rate or more or a little less if I feel like it. But the answer is yes. All of the hours from the moment you hit that first job, or really to me from the moment I leave Home Depot, because I really, I stop there basically every morning. When I leave Home Depot, if I was just there for my basic stuff that I need all the time, that's when my time starts for that first job. When I finish that first job and drive away, my time starts for the next job. And all of the time I spend, <clears throat> now here's what I don't charge for. If I need a trip to Home Depot, I shouldn't have needed. Like if I showed up and I looked at all the work to be done and I made my list and I went to Home Depot and I got everything on my list, I'm charging that to the job. If I get back and I figure out that I screwed up and I didn't buy something that I should have known I needed to buy, no, I don't bill for that second trip. Now that's a matter of pride. That's honestly, this is a business channel. That's probably not the best way to run your business. 
but I do have some pride. And to me, my pride tells me that if I should have known, if it's my fault that I didn't pick up that thing, that I didn't notice I was going to need it because I didn't look closely enough or think it through far enough, then yeah, that's on me. So you, you do actually charge for your Home Depot time. All right. I would like to keep my day job and do handyman jobs on the weekends. What are your thoughts on sole proprietorship instead of LLC to keep things simple? I don't know. Um, it, if you're really small, I mean, if you're talking about like $200 a week or something worth of work, then I guess the short answer is I don't know. But if you're doing this on evenings and weekends, if you're trying to really supplement your income, uh, and you know what? I'm going to change my answer. You need to be an LLC. You just do. The whole point of being an LLC is limiting. It's a limited liability company. The point is to limit your liability. If you're an LLC and you fix somebody's plumbing and that plumbing breaks later and they try to blame you for that plumbing and it floods their whole house and causes $23,000 worth of damage. If you're not an LLC, if you're just like DBA Ray, then guess what? They're coming after Ray. Uh, if they come after your LLC, if you did the work under your LLC, and if you kept all of your LLC's finances separate, and you did everything by the books above board, when they come after your LLC, they can only get from your LLC what your LLC has. So if your LLC only owns a few tools, then guess what? You're not on the hook for that person's house. Now, I don't mean to say start an LLC so that you don't have to uh, atone for what you've done wrong. What I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there that are sue hungry. I heard one the other day about a guy who did grout work on tile. The tile was not on a good subfloor and he told them that <clears throat> and he did the grout work on their tile and they came back and sued him and won and he has to replace the subfloor and the tile and the grout because he did the grout. He did the grout and his grout came out, which he told him it would, and now he's on the hook for their entire floor. Well, if it's a LLC, they can only come after the company, but they can't come take your house, your truck, your money that's in your bank account. So go with an LLC, just do. Do you have a video on your approach to getting a property? Okay, I already went over that, how to get a property management company. Here's a good one. Can one do handyman work out of a Subaru Forester? Yeah, you can. Uh, he also says, what is the best setup, truck, trailer, or van? I have a very strong opinion on this. Two very strong opinions. Number one, I'm trying to whittle my inventory and my tools down further and further and further because I would love to fit everything in like a, like a, a Oh, not a Jeep Grand Cherokee, a Dodge Grand Caravan. I would love to just fit everything I need into a nice little comfortable vehicle with like good AC and be more comfortable throughout my day. Right now I'm in a big van, a big, big, big van. So I'm going to say this, trailer is out of the question for what I'm doing, for what I'm trying to tell you how to do. Uh, you're, you're doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of small jobs all the time, all the time. Sometimes you'll have a bigger job, and if you do, and you're going to need some bigger things, you bring those bigger things at that time. But a trailer? No, you don't need a trailer. Trailers are not easy to park in residential neighborhoods, typically. In fact, my van by itself, sometimes I have to park like three houses down. So no, you don't want a trailer. Uh, that's for like kitchen remodelers. You know, A trailer would be great because you can go park at one time, work on the place for a week, and then take the trailer home. But you don't want to haul a trailer all over town all day. Uh, pickup truck, they're nice, uh, they look cool, a lot of people like them. To me, um, get a van. <clears throat> you need a van. It's already waterproof, it's very large inside, so you don't have to worry about your stuff getting stolen because you can lock it up. You don't have to worry about your stuff getting rained on. Both of those apply to trailers, but a regular van, you can get in and out of all the little spaces all around town. So Subaru Forester, go for it, man. Like really, maybe even limit like, I've got a list this long of the jobs that I'll do. Uh, maybe limit that list to this and just say, hey, I know it's a little inconvenient, but I'm damn good at these and I'll knock them out fast. And set your Forester up so that it has just what you need for just the jobs that you need. Put a rack on top maybe, and then you can do some bigger jobs too. But no, that'd be great to have a Forester. 
I'm probably going to stick with the Vans for a long time. I was just like a newer, nicer van. Um, but yeah, use your Forester, bro. Let's see. I've put together a price sheet and visited about 20 property management companies in my area. I'm finding that they want you to have a contractor's license to work with them. My state doesn't have a handyman or a remodeler's contractor license available. Only up to $1,000 material and labor allowed for a handyman. Do you have any suggestions for this? Two suggestions. Number one, take those jobs that are under $1,000. They're great. You know, almost, well, really pretty much everything I do is under $1,000. So go ahead and take those and build your business around those. And if it's a job that's going to be more than a thousand, just say, I'm sorry, but by state law, I can't do jobs over a thousand dollars. Now here's my better advice. Go get your contractor's license. Look for a private company. This is very important. Look for a private company that helps people get contractor's license. You'll pay them a fee of $1,300 or something. They will put you through the classes. They will tell you everything you need to know. They'll help you fill out the forms. And a lot of people think like, oh, contractor's license, man, you, you got to be so experienced to get that. Trust me, I know a lot of contractors. You don't. Let me tell you what contractors, to become a contractor, the agencies that do the licensing, let me tell you what they would like to see uh, for you to become a contractor. Your fucking money. They want your money. It's money, 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 money. As far as I'm concerned, it's a racket. It's a racket that I'm going to join because guess what? I need my contractor's license because I would like to do jobs over $1,000 as well. So I'm getting my contractor's license. Find a private company, give them your money, buy your contractor's license, and then start doing this work. And if anybody tells you otherwise, screw them, man. Yeah, there are great con. There are guys out there who have spent their entire lives building houses who are amazing at it, who started out as a helper cleaning up two by fours and raking stuff up and throwing it in the trash and worked themselves up to owning a house building company and they're real contractors. But I'll tell you what, when you drive around town, all the little white trucks that you see that say ROC and then a number, most of those guys, far less experienced than you think. Most of them aren't even super great at what they do. Half of them, far more than half of them, go out of business within the first year. Go become a contractor. It's not above you to get that license. You just go and you do what you show up and say, what do I need to do to become a contractor? They'll tell you, you'll do it. You'll get your license and you will grow your business. Ah, good one. <clears throat> Is 50% of the scope a fair pay? I've had like three questions about this in the last month. Here's apparently what's happening. This is foreign to me. It sounds like there are property management companies and maybe they're not property management companies, but that's what this channel's for. So when these guys ask me these questions, I assume that's what they're talking about. This could be coming actually from contractors down to their subcontractors. But what they're doing is people are saying, hey, come be a handyman for this company. And here's what we'll do. We'll bid the job, right? We will decide how much the customer is going to pay for this job. And we're going to have you do the work and then you get to keep 50% of the scope. Now, I don't know if that means materials and labor or just labor, but it honestly doesn't matter. No, don't give away 50% of what you're doing. Don't ever give away, not 50%, 30%. That's fair enough. I know a lot of contractors who, who basically get their subcontractor on the job and they add 30% to that. I do something kind of similar where I'm not a contractor and I'm not contracting, but I have other people that have their own LLC that are their own handyman business that I sub my work to as well. And when I send them that work, the deal is, is that I bill for their labor. So they go do the job. And when I build a property management company for their labor, I keep 27% of their labor. 30% 30 seems to be the standard, the average, uh, but 50%, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what's happening here is they're screwing people and charging them way too much money for simple work. And then they're just taking a gigantic cut of that, but they've charged so much that your 50% is still a good amount. Don't be part of, of that system. You know what I mean? You don't need to, you can take care of yourself. You really can. 
You can be in charge of yourself, take care of yourself. You can do ethical work that you feel is the right work to do and the right way to do it. Uh, do you have workers? Do you pay them? Blah, blah. Okay, so I just went over that. Yes, I have workers, but what I do with my workers is they are their own business, and my business will send their business a request to do some work. And then my business will invoice for the work they did. And see, this is what's great, is they understand that if I'm taking a percentage of their labor, they now know that it's in my best interest to charge a good, high, fair amount for them. Uh, I'm not going to go charge, I'm not going to say, oh, that's, you know, so-and-so did that job, so I'm going to charge less for it because it doesn't come out of my pocket and it makes me look good. No, I don't do that because I make money off of the work that they're doing. If I invoice $200 for their work and I'm taking 27%, then I get, was it, $54 in my pocket. So if I could have charged 300, I could have had another 27%, another $27 by charging that extra 100. So they know that it's in my best interest to bill as aggressively for their work as I bill for my work. And then I keep my 27% and I pay them the rest and I foot the bill for all the materials. Uh, that's kind of one of the biggest sort of like steps that you have to be able to make sort of jump to the next level with these property management companies is if you want to stay busy you need to pay for materials and you need to be able to do that to stay busy like i said is three to five hundred dollars a day for me uh, so i pay for all of their materials they use my home depot account to buy the materials and then i bill for their labor uh nah, nah, nah. How to download the tables with prices. Uh, that is only for people who join as members. I have a membership program somewhere on your screen there. You can click something, I think it says join. And uh, if so if you are, if you have joined and I just haven't seen you and don't realize that you're waiting for your documents, uh, yes, I do have a table with prices. What I have is it's pages and pages long. It's not done. I want to be very clear to anybody who wants to join or become a member. Uh, this channel is not how I make money. My business is how I make money. This channel, I, I started because I want to share this info because I don't like the employer-employee relationship. I don't like seeing grown men being talked down to by other grown men who aren't any better than them. So what I want y'all to be able to do is go out there and do what I'm doing for yourselves and not for somebody else. So. I made this channel. Now, I've made this list. It's always evolving. Uh, I don't want to hear complaints about like, oh, you could have added this, you could have done that. I'm going to with whatever time I have, but this is not how I make money. So what you get is you get my list and it's, I swear, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of jobs because they're going to ask, what kind of work do you do? And I used to say, let me just tell you what kind of work I don't do. Now I say, here's a list a very thorough list of all the work I do. And if there's something not on that list that you want done, chances are I do it and I just didn't think about putting it on the list. And I'm also putting rates on there and it's, it's very, 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 very still evolving. This is not a finished list, but I'm going through and I'm trying to just figure out best case scenario if I'm already on the job and I just need to grab the part and the tool and do the job, how many minutes does the job take? How much should I be charging, like say on a move out, if there's 30 items, so I'm not doing my $125 trip fee, I'm knocking out a move out that takes me a day and three quarters to knock out. Right now what I'm doing is I'm using sort of the hourly method to figure out what I'm going to bill at the end. What I want to eventually do is have this list set up to where my wife or somebody else who's doing admin work, where I can just tell them what I did. And they can almost like medical billing and they can just be like replaced bathroom sink pop-up. Looks like that's always $25 plus $7 in parts. So to get that list, uh, if you're a member, you need to email me and say, hey, I just joined as a member. Can you please send me the list and I'll send the list. The email is bulletproofhandyman at gmail.com or the bullet. No, hold on. Don't listen to that bulletproof handyman business at gmail.com i do believe but give me one second yes bulletproof handyman business at gmail.com and if you send it there i will receive it and i will send you the list all right do we want to shut down yet 
I don't think so. I'm going to go with another one. Okay, those aren't questions. All right, I tell you what. How about if we're done for today? This has been pretty nice. I think we went over a whole lot of useful information. I could rant for hours, but I measure my time with my family on most days in minutes rather than hours. Um, and I'd like to go spend some more time with my family. I did get some time with them today because I worked like a half day. Uh, you guys have a great day. There are more videos coming. There's so many more questions I haven't answered. I will get to them. Like I said, I'm just, my main source of income is running my business. It's top priority seven days a week. Uh, and I sit down and I do this when I can. Now, if y'all will please like and share and subscribe and comment, all of those, any way that you can interact with me is going to pump up the algorithm. It's going to get my channel noticed. It's going to get me more subscribers, more advertising, more whatever, to the point where this may start actually bringing in some real amount of money for me. And if it does, then I can justify taking a day off a week and maybe like really putting together some much better content. But for those of y'all who stayed with me this long, I don't even know how long it's been because I'm not watching the time, but it's been a while. Um, thank you. Email me, comment, like, subscribe, do all those things. Uh, I appreciate y'all. I wish you all very good luck. I hope you are successful in your business. Let me know what videos you want to see next. I've already got a big old list. They will be coming. And y'all have a great night.